What about things you can influence? Ricky, a Stoic novice, isn't so sure that the Stoics have got it right. Shouldn't there be a third category, things that you haven't got full control over but can still influence? For example, I want to request time off. Work. I agree it's not completely under my control, but surely I have some influence over the outcome, right? And how would you best influence the outcome, replies Sam, Ricky's friend and a more experienced Stoic. By the way I make my case, answers Ricky. Can you control how you make your case, asks Sam? For sure. Can you control whether your boss approves your request? Not really. Then influence the outcome by focusing fully on what you can control. Your actions. It all comes back to the dichotomy of control. Sure, we can influence. Things. But we best do this by focusing only on those aspects that are under. Our direct control. The Stoic Archer. The Stoics came up with a super helpful analogy to help us further. Understand the dichotomy of control. That of an archer. Archery is an outdoor sport. So we know the archer's performance is vulnerable to the. Elements. This would include the wind, of course. So even when an archer fires a perfect shot, they still might miss. A gust of wind might blow the arrow off course, an external factor the archer can't control. Here's the question. What attitude should the archer take if they do everything right but then the wind makes them miss? The stoic answer is to be unconcerned. As long as you did your best, you should not blame yourself for the Outcome if an external, uncontrollable factor blows you off course. I find that a very reassuring idea, don't you? Be the Stoic Archer, Dad. From Scott Corey of Stoic Archer Academy LLC, Mental. Health Coach, Stoic Mentor, Substance Use Clinician. My son, at eight years old, tried his hand at archery for the first time. He was sincerely enjoying just shooting the arrows at the ground and hoping they would stick. I asked him to shoot for a goal and aim for a target. Just a few misses and my son let out an audible sigh of disappointment. I taught him the stoic archer's lesson, the dichotomy of control and its benefits, the dangers of outcome-based thinking, the importance of practicing doing your best in everything you do and how that is what truly matters. Now when I strive for goals, my son says to me, be the stoic archer, dad. A problem with goals. Tom wants to lose weight. His doctor has advised him that he needs to lose. A significant amount, but he feels overwhelmed by the prospect. He flits. Between avoiding dieting altogether and going on crash diets that he can't. Sustain. Sound familiar? The stoic approach to setting goals can help Tom and others feel more in. Control. It has two key steps. One. Define what needs to be done to achieve your outcome. 2. Make sure the steps are within your control. What is within Tom's control as he sets out on his weight loss journey? Tom's Stoic Diet The Stoic approach to setting goals is to focus on the process more than the outcome. The process, the journey, is under our control. The outcome is not. Tom lays out his plan of action. Meal and snack prepping for the week. Avoiding processed junk foods. Setting a reasonable calorie limit. Moderate exercise. Talking to a trusted friend about the plan. He is excited by this plan but pauses to ask whether his action plan is made. Up of things within his control. For a stoic sage, yes. But his self-knowledge tells him that he would struggle with the avoiding junk food. Part. So, he moderates this rule. One takeaway a week is allowed so long as he follows all the other rules. Three months later, Tom is happy to report that his stoic diet is going very well. What do you think of this approach? Your stoic step-by-step plan. Is there anything you would like to achieve that feels a bit daunting? Would you like to try a stoic goal-setting approach? You can apply Tom's approach to nearly any goal. Make your stoic step-by-step plan below. It will only take five minutes and you'll be glad you did. Make it include the following. The outcome I want to achieve is Next. The steps I need to take each day to achieve this are Then list your items. 
The most common trap is to make the steps too ambitious, things that might be in your control if you were a stoic sage but aren't realistic for you. Yet, tip, prefer baby steps to big steps. For example, if your goal is to exercise more but you are finding it difficult to find time between school, work, or the kids prefer increasing your step count each day. Even getting in some laps around the block can be worked into the busiest of schedules. These baby steps are steps within our control and a precursor to larger achievements. With each success, confidence and ability grow. Use the reserve clause. When stating goals, ancient Stoics would often add phrases like fate, permitting or unless anything prevents me. Why? Because then they weren't setting themselves up for expecting outcomes outside of their control and subsequent disappointment. This is called adding a reserve clause. So why not experiment yourself? Try. I will see you tomorrow, fate permitting or. I will go on holiday next month, unless anything prevents me. Alternative reserve clauses might be God willing, if all goes well or. Other things being equal. Which reserve clause resonates the most with you? The true cause of unhappiness? In his excellent book Lessons in Stoicism, John Sellers, a leading modern Stoic scholar, makes the startling claim that much unhappiness is down to us misclassifying things as being under our control when they are not. It's worth rereading that sentence. If true, it means Stoicism can make a huge positive difference to you. Could it be true for you? Do any of the things that cause you unhappiness stem from you thinking that you have control over things you don't? Unhappiness, a psychotherapist's perspective. As a psychotherapist, the more I explored Stoicism, the more I realized this. Ancient philosophy is incredibly relatable to my modern-day clients. Going back through my caseload, I see many problems lead back to the same root. Cause, trying to control the uncontrollable. Anger and frustration, believing you can control other people. Shame and guilt, believing you had more control over the past. Worry and anxiety, overthinking aspects of the future you cannot. Control. Procrastination, trying to get everything perfect before you start. You can't make everything perfect. And this was just a start. Are the concerns that brought my clients to therapy relevant to you? Could the dichotomy of control help you manage them better? Worrying about things outside your control. Are you a worrier? If so, the dichotomy of control can come to the rescue. Simply ask yourself, am I worrying about things outside my control? If the answer is yes, ignore the worry. It's outside your control, so why? Fritter away your energy worrying about it. On the other hand, if you are worrying about things that are under your control, then act or make a plan. It's as simple as that. Consider these three cases. In each case, should you ignore the worry, act or plan? 1. The possibility of a financial crash next year. 2. Having an interview tomorrow. 3. Anxiety about missing your flight. You'll find each of these worries covered in the remaining entries in this chapter. Today, when you notice yourself worrying, simply ask yourself what you're worried about. If it's about something you cannot control, don't worry.